الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا قال المصنف رحمه الله ونفعنا الله به وبه أجمعين القابل باصد So the one who constrains or constricts and the one who expands. Al-Qabid huwa al-Mudayyiku ala man arad. So Al-Qabid is the one who constrains whomsoever he desires. Al-Masid huwa al-Muwasiru al-Rizqi ala man arad. And Al-Basid is the one who expands the sustenance for whomsoever he desires. قال تعالى أن الله مستعي سيس الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر so Allah expands sustenance for whomsoever He pleases and He constrains it يقدر يعني يضيق الله مسلي على سيدنا محمد وقال تعالى الله بسط الله الرزق لمنه and Allah says, if He were to expand His uh, sustenance for all of His creatures, they would behave tyrannically in the earth. Then He also says, Allah, He constrains and He expands. And one of them said, بين هذين الاسمين بهذه الآية. And he says it's incumbent upon us to join between these two names as he mentioned in this verse. So you usually, virtually in all of the books of Asma al-Husna, al-Qabil al-Basitu are mentioned together. So it's not al-Qabil kada wa kada, al-Basit, al-Qabil kada wa kada, al-Basit kada wa kada, but Qabil al-Basitu are mentioned together as is the case in the last verse that was mentioned here. Actually in all of these verses they're mentioned together. So as far as adorning ourselves with these character traits, to switch to this book by Sheikh Ahmed Zarouk because the book we were using Al-Izm al-Amd al-Salam Number one, he doesn't bring all of them, as is, and of couple, Sheikh Abdul Imam Ahmed Zarouk doesn't mention. But secondly, they're not arranged in the order of the hadith, where this this book of Al Azm and Abdul Salam is ordered, arranged in the same order as the hadith, so it's a lot easier to reference instead of skipping around and searching for it. من جهة التخلق، and from the direction of adorning ourselves with these characteristics، بالقبض عن كل ما سواه، that we constrain ourselves from anyone from worshiping, idolizing anyone other than Allah Taala. So. There might be an inclination that someone is inclined to love someone as they should love Allah. وَمِنْ النَّاسِ مِنْ يَتَقِيبُ مِنْ مِنْ دُونِ لَهُ إِنْدَادٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ كَعُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَشَدُّهُمْ بَلِّلَّهِ So amongst people there are those who take equals that they love as they should love Allah. And so one constrains oneself from that, even if there is an inclination in the person. وَالْبَاسْقُ So الْبَاسِد فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ يَرْضَاهُ And that we are expansive and open for everything that pleases Allah. So we open our hearts to be receptive to everything that pleases Allah. That's how الْبَاسِد Our hearts are open and expansive and receptive to everything that pleases Allah, and they're constrained and closed uh, from uh, worshipping anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From 
قال الله الخاف بالرائع so the one who uh, debases and the one who elevates قال إمام قال الإمام السلطي الذي يخفض الكفار من استمعان the one who debases those who arrogantly reject uh, the truth and the religion by dis distancing them. So being distanced from Allah is a form of debasement. And shaitan, one thing shaitan wants to do is debase us. And he, he, he does that by distancing us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Makes us think about the dunya, become absorbed in the dunya. All of our pursuits are the dunya. And so, as we become deeper and deeper and deeper immersed and enmeshed in the dunya and the world, we're being distanced from Allah. And so, how does He do that? He wants us to stay trapped at the level of the nafs al shahwanin, or the nafs al To stay trapped at the level of the bestial, uh, <coughs> lustful soul, or in the Quranic term, the nafs that commands to that which is vile and evil because why? It's, it's, it's consumed by its passions to the point that it disregards the guidance of the divine law. So, I, I want to do this, I want to drink this, it's haram, it's alcohol. So I disregard the guidance that says haram and to avoid, it's tenibu, avoid it. But I'm so trapped in my body, I like it so much, I like the way it makes me feel. I love, I love the way it empowers me, it gives me boldness. And so, look. And so that's, that, that's the, the carnal appetites. And when the soul is trapped in that, that love, it never reaches the depths of uh, lawam. It starts to rebuke itself. Why did you do that? Why did you drink that? You know it's haram. It's bad for you. It's destroying your brain. It's destroying your liver. What's wrong with you? But it, it made me feel so good. It's still haram. And it rebukes it until it inclines for a, a nafs al lawana. It's, it's an inclination towards the nafs al amar al suq and nafs al mulhama. And as it continues to rebuke itself, and then it gradually inclines towards the nafs al-mulhana, the inspired soul, the soul that is in a state where the nafs al-amar al one of its characteristics, it can't hear the messages of divine guidance. So it doesn't hear the message of Qur'an because it's so trapped. The message of the Qur'an is appealing to the ruh, to the spirit of the human. And, but it's so trapped in its physical, fleshly nature, it can't hear the, the message. But when it means, reaches to a nafs al-mulhama, now it's, it's, it's the basit. Now it's been opened. And when it's open, it can receive the messages of divine guidance. And that's what leads it to the nafs days and nafs al-mulhama Once it's receptive to the message of divine guidance, it comes to, to peace comes to rest. So it's now a nafsu mutma'inna, the pleased soul. And when it's the pleased soul, it's pleasing to Allah, and that's a rabi. And when it's pleased with Allah, and jaza'u min jins al amin When it's pleased with Allah, it does the things that are consistent with the divine law, which you couldn't do at this stage of the nafsu and so now Allah is pleased with it. And when Allah is pleased with the soul, now the soul has the ability to be perfected because the perfection only comes from Allah. We can't give that to ourselves. So there's the gratiation of the soul, the nafsi. نفس الملحمة النفس المطمئنة النفس الراضية النفس المرضية النفس الكاملة هكذا 
And so when the nafs is and and nafsul bahimiyah shahwaniyah, the bestial lustful soul is qabid, is closed and constrained and can't receive divine guidance. When it becomes a nafsul murhama, it's basit. Now it's open and receptive to, the, to divine guidance. And when it's in that, oh, the Prophet sallallahu the Messenger of Allah, may the blessings and peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Verily, as reported by Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, Verily Allah elevates through this book, Al-Qur'an, some people, and he debases others. Verily Allah elevates with this book some people, and he debases others. Al-Qur'an. So that's the first thing. That's a key to our elevation. And so the elevation, again, comes from Allah. And this is this shows how there's a ja'u bayna la yubkhilu ahadan a'maluk al-jannah wa la anta ya rasul Allah wa la anna an yataqmi Allah bi rahmatihi wa fadli. No one of you's actions will enter them into paradise. Into paradise because of what you used to do. So which is it? It's both. The actions are necessary but not sufficient. So we heard that expression before, right? Something is necessary but not sufficient. Actions are necessary but not sufficient. The actions are the key that unlocks Allah's mercy and His grace. And so no one's actions in and of themselves will enter the person into Jannah. But Allah says, فَدْخُلُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Enter it, paradise, because of what you used to do. And so, in Allah, Allah يَرْحُوا بِهَادِ kitab. So the person's action, reading the Qur'an, studying the Qur'an, trying to implement the Qur'an in their life, that action in Allah Yarfrubihad al Kitab invites the mercy of Allah to elevate them. In Allah Yarfru Bihad al Kitab, but Amali La Yarfauni. My action is not elevating me. It's Allah through His mercy. But the, my action is the key to Allah's mercy. Does that make sense? So and the second, humility. And explain that. Usually people say, it's the other way around. No, the min is... is is uh, extraneous to emphasize the ruling that charity will never decrease your wealth. مَا نَقَصَتْ صَدَقَةٌ مِنْ مَا وَمَا زَابَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا إِزَّةٍ And Allah will only increase a servant who pardons others and honor and nobility. All of these are counterintuitive. This is called the counterintuitive hadith. So, why? Because it's, it goes against reason. If you spend your wealth, your wealth has decreased. But Allah says if you spend your wealth, it won't increase. It won't decrease. مَنْ نَقَصَ صَدَقَةٌ مِنْ مَا So it's counterintuitive. But in reality, why? Two things. If you give charity and sadaqa, the wealth that remains with you, you do more with it than you would have done with the original amount. Because we waste money. Sometimes you have a lot of money, you spend it all, you have nothing to show. And what do you ask yourself? Where did it go? It just slipped through my fingers. 
And secondly, Allah will give it back to you more than, than you gave. You go to the fundraiser, you give $5,000, and then the IRS sends you a check for $6,000. Oh, you made a, tax, a mistake on your tax, Mr. Abdullah. So we're refunding you $6,000. Allahu Akbar. مَا نَقَصَتْ صَدَقَةِ الْمِنْمَانِ وَمَا زَابَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةً So we think if I constantly forgive people, they think I'm a pushover, it'll make me weak. They think I'm a chump. Some of you know the word chump. <laughs> they think I'm a pushover. They think I'm weak. But Allah will give you izz. And you'll be great and mighty. No one will think you're a pushover. <laughs> so the point we're trying to make is here. But it's still counterintuitive. You humble yourself again. People think you're low, nobody. But Allah will elevate you. And so, the Rafi, the one who elevates, we invite that elevation through the Qur'an and through humility, amongst other things. Allah give us tawfiq in that regard. So, at khaluk, فَقَالَ الْهُنَا الشَّيْفْ أَحْنَ الزَّارُوكَ ومن جهة التخلق أن يخفض ما أمره الله تعالى بخفضه كالنفس والهوى. جميل. He says that you debase and lower that which Allah has ordered you to lower, specifically your nafs and your hawa. So you humble your nafs. And your inclination. And so by by what? By not following them. And they're lower in the the nuts in its lower stages of development. Once it's in its higher stages of development, then you don't you don't have to uh, consciously make an effort to follow it because it leads you to that which is consistent with Sharia. And that's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So when the nafs is trained, the nafs and the hawa instinctively follow that which is consistent with the divine law. But it comes over time and training. <coughs> to be. But when it's not trained, the hawa and the nafs aren't trained, what happens? <coughs> so they don't deem and as for one who fears the time they will stand before their Lord. Or they fear the station of their Lord. Maqam Rabbihi, Maqam Al Wukuf and Allah. Maqam Rabbihi. وَمَقَامُ رَبِّهِ مَكَانَةَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى status. And when نَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى and denies the soul, the things, the hawa, encourages it towards of, of sin and rebellion. Then the jannata here not well. So they have to fight it. But once it's conditioned and trained, it in, there's no more fight. It instinctively follows that which consistent with the divine law. So the the essence of your humanity. And it's amenable and receptive to external messages that can either 
elevated or debasing. The hawa is uh, whims that originate within ourselves and caprices that suggest to the next. So whims and caprices which can be birthed in our mind, which can uh, be birthed by our heart, suggest to the next. That's why said, Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ وَنْ هُفِيرِ الْمَقَامَ رَبِّي وَنَاهَ النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى And derives their soul, this quality within us, that as we said, it can, it can trap us at a low level of development or it can elevate us. But the one who, who denies it, the following the inclinations that come to it, so sometimes these uh, whims that can be re referred to almost synonymously, not quite, as a wadded. So a wadded is a suggestion. So this can be a, a wadded maliki. It can be an angelic suggestion. A malik shaitan, a wadded shaitan. It can be a demonic suggestion. So these are our exterior, external. So the, 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 the hawa has its root outside of us and the nafs is integral to us. The hawa suggests, but the nafs then follows or implements. That's the difference between them. And so he debases that which Allah orders to be debased, such as the nafs, and this is such as the nafs of Bahimiya Shawaniya, the bestial. Our carnal nafs is the one he debases. Well, how And those uh, suggestions that come. And he elevates those things Allah is ordered to be elevated, such as the heart and the, and the ruh, by refining them. So Allah mentions for the heart that. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفِعُ مَالُ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A day no amount of wealth or children will benefit. The only one benefit are the ones who come before Allah with a rectified heart. And so that's a heart that's been cleansed of the stain of sin. بَرَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ So their sin, their heart, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ One who comes to, to Allah بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ with a rectified heart. And so it's elevated through its rectification. And the ruh is elevated. Some would say the ruh is the animating spirit. And some say that these are all synonymous with the expressions of different stages of development. Tayyip. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So back to Imam Suyuti, he says, Rahimahullah, and Mu'izz al Mudil. الَّذِي يُعِزُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ The one who uh, gives honor to whomsoever he pleases and the one who humiliates whomsoever he pleases. So this is very close to الْخَافِ uh, دُرَّاثِ So the one الْخَافِ uh, the, uh, the one who debases and مُذِل the one who humiliates so debasement and humiliation are very close. And then rafiq wa mu'izz. So the one who elevates and the one who gives honor because why well, honor elevates us. So these are very close in meaning. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُكَ تُؤْتِ الْمُكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرُ إِنَّكَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So, Ya Allah, the possessor of all sovereignty, dominion, you give it to him, so you please, we mentioned this earlier, and you withdraw it from him, so you please, you honor, and give honor and, and, and might, you can even say, many different shades of meaning, and is. You honor and give might to whomsoever you please, and you dishonor or de humiliate whomsoever you please. With you is all good, verily you over all things have power. <coughs> so 
فالله يعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء المعز ومذل فقال رحمه الله تخلقا so adorning ourselves with these character traits and to عز الله ومرت بإعزازه that you uh, give might and honor to those things you've been ordered to, to honor <coughs> such as the, the sha'air of Allah, so the, the, the signs of Allah. The signs of Allah are many. Uh, for example, dress. A person shall, uh, it should, should honor basic uh, clothing that identifies them as a Muslim. Because that's, that's, in that is honor. To the extent possible under one's circumstances, everyone's circumstances vary. So, but, to, to, and, and that's light. So a person, for example, they know, you know, a lot of people out there hate Muslims. I don't care. I'm going out as a Muslim. That's, that's is right or wrong. Now, I'm putting on taqiyya today. I'm representing a person that consciously, you know, you know, it's dangerous and you know, maybe, you know, it's not, it's not like hijab, I don't have to do it. That person, they're humiliating themselves, right or wrong. Now, if you're just, you're just who you are, that's one thing, but you're consciously like, you know, it's dangerous out there, I'm just going to blend in today. ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين ولكن المنافقين لا يعلمون. I'm not saying he's a hypocrite. The hypocrites don't know it. I'm not saying anyone doing that is acting like a hypocrite. They don't. They don't realize. They don't. They don't have a sense because their hearts are diseased. Right? The hypocrites are the ultimate. Disease, the fact, is one of the worst diseases of the heart. Right? They, they, they fake belief in their heart. They hide disbelief in their heart. Disease in the heart. في قلوبهم مرض وزادهم الله مرضا. There's disease in the heart. إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. So when, as we said at the outset, التخلق بهذا ال هذا الأسماء, adorning ourselves with these names, it gives us godly character. The godly act as an attribute, not as a uh, as a as a noun, but as a descriptive. We're reflecting to the extent humanly possible the characteristics of our Lord. That in and of itself is empowering, and that helps us to cultivate an active and active living relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah give us tawfiq. And again, when we talk about these things, not trying to indict anybody, judge anybody, saying when people consciously do things, one thing you just do it, that's who you are, that's what you do. When people calculate them consciously, then they debase themselves. And when they consciously do the opposite, they give might to themselves. So may Allah give us, give us is doing. Is that? No. The hearing. The Sabir that nothing escapes his realization, nothing that can be heard escapes his realization, even if it's hidden. The Yasr Surah when Najwa. And he hears that which is secret, and he hears uh, hidden counsels. Bel huwa, bel ma huwa adakul min dalika wa akhfa. 
even that which is more hidden, that which is more uh, subtle and, and more difficult to detect than those things and that which is more hidden than those things. He hears with no inner ear and no, and no outer ear. Just as he speaks without a tongue. And so in his uh, befitting to, to, to his right and his majesty be he exalted. Hearing is an expression of an attribute through which, in a perfect way, all characteristics of things that can be heard are manifested, are revealed. Whereas many things is capable, we say Donald Trump is. Uh, when he says, I'm a nationalist, he's sending a dog whistle. He's using a dog whistle. Like, what does that mean? What's the foundation of the expression? Dog whistle. No, no. Nobody hears the dog. The dog hears it. We don't hear it. You have a dog whistle, and the dog hears it and comes. But we don't hear it. And so dog whistle politics, like welfare queens. So that, that's a dog whistle for, it's not true, lazy African American women who want to take uh, your tax dollars and stay at home and do nothing. So is racism without racism? Is racism without racism? And that, that's the origin of dog whistle politics. So when Trump says, I'm a nationalist, it's a dog whistle to the Klan, the Aryan nation, the skinheads, I'm with you guys. I'm with you white nationalists. So that's what a dog whistle politics. So most people hearing that don't hear it, but if you're with the Klan, the skinhead, and the nation, like, right on. Right on, Trump E. We hear you. We hear you, brother. That's a dog whistle. Democrats do it too. Hillary Clinton's super predator. That's a black thug. So you can't, as a policy, you can't go out and say, we have to arrest all these black thugs. So you say, we have to arrest these super predators. That's a dog whistle. Mm -hmm. And so this, this, this all came with this era of post-racial America, which is a myth, as we see. Then we'll give us more feet. But Allah hears it all. Allah hears it all. Allah hears the dog whistle. Allah hears it all in the most perfect way it can be heard. So, Allah misunderstands. He mentions below something from Imam uh, Kushayri's Tahbir. So the portion of, of a servant of this particular uh, characteristic, and so he, he knows that Allah hears everything, therefore he guards his tongue in public and private. And he stays in a constant state of, uh, of surveilling himself or a constant state of awareness of Allah's surveilling himself. It be both. And Al-Ihsan and Ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu fa'illam takum tarahu fa'innu fa'innu yara'u. <coughs> but they both relate to the surveillance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and he demands from his soul a very detailed accounting. Because he knows Allah hears all. Allah hears all. Uh, 
لم يخلق له السمع إلا ليسمع كلام الله وكتابه وحديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he knows that Allah has only created his hearing that he hears the book of Allah and his and uh, of Allah's speech and the book of Allah and the, uh, the tradition of his of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi the hadith of the messenger of Allah that's the the primary purpose of our hearing Allah says wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wal insa illa li'abudu i've only created the jinn is that they worship. And so our worship is what do we have to do? It comes through messages that are conveyed to us. And that our ears were created to hear that. Other things are extraneous. So that doesn't mean we use our ears, Father. We have Eid, we have festivals. So there's dancing and singing and nasheed and we listen. But the primary and the, the ultimate purpose of our ears is to hear the Quran and to hear the hadith of the Prophet because that's the foundation of our worship and we've only been created, created to worship I've only created the jinn and the humans that they worship me and so this is what our ears are for he reminds us of that of a person or adorning oneself with this characteristic that the person uh, hears that which he's been commanded to hear. And he sees that, and, and here you can say there's, there's an aspect of insight, uh, that which has been requested from him. That, or, or to use a, 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 an analogy, that's very appropriate from the English language. Basir, he or she keeps their eye on the prize. So, so we keep looking at what's demanded of us and looking at where we're going to go. What's the prize? Keep your eye on the prize. The prize is the pleasure of Allah. Rahman Allah wal Jan. Allahumma inni asaluka ridaka when? Jannah. That's the prize. Keep the eye on the prize. This is essentially what Sheikh Ahmed, Ahmed Zarouk is saying. وَمَا يَقَعُوا مَنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فِيهِ حَتَّى يُقْرِمَهُ مَوْلَاهُ بِأَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ سَمْعًا وَبَصَرًا وَيَدًا وَمُؤَيِّدًا مَنْ جِيَةِ الْمَحَبَّتِهِ إِيَاهُ And so he also, he, so that he, he sees that which has been requested of him and that which uh, occurs from the commandment of Allah concerning him until his Lord honors him and that he has seeing and hearing his hands and his assistant from the, the direction of his love for him. And he manifested, uh, he manifests uh, his secrets to him. His secrets to him. So, keeping the eye on the prize opens up these gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah bless us to attain those. Mm -hmm. uh, the seeing. The one who uh, witnesses and sees all. The one who is alive and nothing escapes him, even that which is beneath the surface of the earth. 
منزه عن أن يكون له بحدقة بحدقة وإشفان. And his his seeing is as high is removed, far removed from occurring through the intermediary of a pupil or uh, eyelids or other parts of the eye that enable us to see. So Allah's seeing is without any of that. Why? There's nothing unlike unto him yet. He hears and he sees in a way that's suitable to his incomparable uh, nature and his incomparable majesty, Azawajal. And he doesn't need eyes. But the Qaddasa, an an yarji'a, an an tiba'i suari wal adwari idati. And he's far, he's far removed, remember al-Malik al-Quddus, al-Quddus, al-Quddusu bimana, al-Nazaha wa tahar So Allah is far removed, and Allah is pure from needing uh, images to be imprinted on his essence as they're imprinted on the pupils of our eyes. Uh, في حدقة الإنسان فإن ذلك من التغيير والتأثير المقتضى للحدقات للحدقات. So because all of that would involve a gen uh, those things are imprinted on his essence as images are imprinted on the pupil of the human being. Because all of that would require change. Something wasn't there with his that. And when he quote unquote saw it, it became imprinted on him, so there's a change. And change is a characteristic of created things. Uh, and it was also inquired uh, Allah being uh, affected by something. Tagir wa ta'fir. And Allah, so when 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 we see things, that image has an effect on our eye. When we see things, that image is a change from the previous state that existed before we saw it. So it requires change and effect, and Allah is free from all change, and Allah is free from being affected. Allah is mu'athir. He's the one who affects things in his creation. He's not affected by anything in his creation. كان الله ولا شيء معه هو الآن على ما عليه كان. There was a law and there was nothing that existed to affect him. And he is now as he was then. So after his creation, he didn't change. After he created his creation, Allah didn't change. وهو الآن على ما عليه كان. He is now as he was then. اللهم صلي على رسول الله.